The rank system has a lot of nuance, a lot of secrets, and the only reason they are ever revealed to the public is thanks to the lead senior competitive designer at Play Valorant, Riot Evermore. This guy gives us these little bits of secrets that are extremely useful and fun to know. Like, did you know um, Swift Play? You know, when it came out, it has a completely different MMR. It's just a fact. You can go ahead and become a mortal MMR in Swift Play and fight Radiance or Q in Swift Play, but not have that same experience in Unrated just because they are completely separate queues. Or, did you know, this one's super fascinating. There is decay in Valorant. Yes, there is literal ranked decay. Okay, if you take a break for a long period of time, they lower your MMR and then they increase your variance. He goes ahead and explains that variance is how confident we are in your MMR, which is absolutely hilarious. It's literally a hidden statistic. The higher your variance, the further you may catch up with players and gain slash lose MMR as well. It's how we tell the range at which you play. If you have a high variance, we are probably less sure about where you belong. And this makes a ton of sense for someone who smurfed and jumped a ton of ranks, they won't decay all the way back to bronze because that variance will be low. They kind of know where they're supposed to belong. And he goes on to say that by doing decay this way, it allows you to get back that MMR we may have detected quickly because you have a higher variance, which allows your MMR to move back to its original spot. This ensures you don't get paired with someone who may be a little bit more rusty than you and not at peak performance. And honestly, if you don't want to get rusty, listen to the sponsor. Truth is, I know you're boosted it's just a fact but you know what we can fix it with today's sponsor valorant tracker oh my god if you haven't heard of it yet i'll be surprised because this this program is a banger no matter how you play casually competitively etc it collects all your statistics and puts it in a nice clean little app for you i can tell that my best map is breeze with 53 kills and an average kda of 2.21 rip because they're removing breeze oh no but it tells you a ton of things from competitive to unrated to whatever which i absolutely love i can check all my stats based off of the agent sorted by any way i need and then i can even check out guides based off of my weakest agents built straight Straight into the app or I can sort all my favorite guns and see how my performance is or if you don't even want to open the app you get a nice little clean UI within the game to give overviews of the stats depending on the agents you're gonna select or how the game is going under the scoreboard it is a fantastic application check it out for free using the link down below. The next thing that a lot of you might already know, but it's so cool to be confirmed, is that there is a deferential round RR gain lose depending on how many rounds you've lost compared to your opponent. With that being said, they actually cap the deferential at 10 RR. You'll never gain or lose more than 10 RR for the round deferential of a match. But at the end of the day, if you do the math, Evermore says that each round is worth around 1 to 2 RR, meaning if you're down 5 to 12, and you win another four rounds before losing the game, you could have potentially saved yourself from losing four to eight RR. Literally every round matters, which is extremely cool. We already know it, but I love seeing and hearing the math behind it. Or did you know that when you AFK, there is an RR penalty. RR penalty starts when you miss three rounds at negative eight RR, capping at negative 12 RR for six rounds AFK total. This is added to the win loss of the match. If you're AFK for six rounds, you do not get the RR for the win at all. One way, if you win, you get zero. And the other, if you lose, you get an additional negative 12 RR. That is a sweet little punishment. We also have a cap. Evermore goes on to say, a match loss will never be more than negative 30 RR if diamond or below, or negative 50 RR for ascendant and above. Imagine losing 50 RR in one go. Oh my god. But for those AFK penalties, they can actually go above those amount. This is on top of our social systems, which gives temporary competitive restrictions for chronic AFK players. So you could lose up to 62 RR in ascendant or above in one. They also penalize negative 3 RR every Every time you dodge a game, this is not called out in the UI anywhere, so you have to be in the know to understand why your RR may have gone down and you didn't notice. Literally, dodging negative 3 RR. Some people might already know, but for those of you who don't, stop dodging. 
Another ranked fact, if you're one of those people who groups with friends, things can change up because what happens if you don't perform as expected? Well, your MMR actually changes. That is why if you're truly better than your MMR, it's worth taking fights and pressing those high ranked players in your matches. Remember, ranked is just a ladder, so when you perform better than those above you on the ladder, this is how you actually climb. But it works in reverse for those as well. If you're in a group and your mach the machine learning data kind of says that you're not performing, you're going to go down as well. Man, these facts are just wild. Or while on the topic of grouping, it's all about your MMR. So he goes on to say that grouping up with lower ranked friends doesn't actually impact your MMR negatively or your RR gains. And this is because your RR gains are based off of your MMR in comparison to the opponents and not about your friend's MMR on your own team. But these facts just keep on coming. Losing to or winning against a player far from your rank doesn't heavily affect our MMR unless you are boosted <laughs> or below your true MMR. We use data to tune the MMR formula and it knows how every rank should perform against one another. Meaning, if you're truly a gold against a diamond, they should roughly understand how a gold will perform against a diamond and if you outperform, they'll probably know you're smurfing and boost your rank up. And on the flip side, if you're diamond facing an ascendant and they know roughly how you should perform and you are completely tanking, they're gonna label you as boosted and down you go. To furthermore, he explains himself. If you are a silver player and you five stack and run into a diamond, if we do our job right, we know a silver player is 15% effective against a diamond player. If you end up being 15% effective, your encounter MMR would stay the same because you performed as expected. But if you're 50% effective, then they're like, damn, you deserve to be more than silver. Or did you know that they do not soften RR loss due to an AFK for two major reasons? Meaning, like, let me first explain this. If you're a four versus five, you lose the same RR even if the guy didn't AFK. And the reasons are toxicity and manipulation. If you were to lose less RR due to an AFK, bad actors would bully the lowest player on the scoreboard in an attempt to get them to AFK so they would lose less RR. This apparently also isn't tackling the problem head on. If we were to reduce AFKs, we wouldn't need to refund or reduce RR or their impact on your games. Now, he's not on the AFK team and goes on to talk a little bit, but I don't know if I fully agree with this. I mean, I know there is bullying or manipulation, I get that, but for the most part, I think most people go into the game with good faith. And a lot of people don't even know this. Like, if I didn't read this, I would have thought that maybe I lose less RR because it was a 4v5. Like, I didn't I didn't know the system didn't in already encounter for this. Not everyone's fully educated. So I would believe just making people lose a little SRR without really them knowing is not a huge deal. Most people don't think that deep ahead. And I would prefer people, like, not get punished for a 4 versus 5, but that's my opinion. All right, let me, let me stop being a smartass and tell you a little bit something that actually accounts for me is the custom game Andy. In a custom game, they have the auto balance button. When you click it, it looks at everyone's unrated and competitive MMR. Then it will look at which MMR has the lowest variance and use that. Variance is how confident they are in your MMR. This is so cool. I did not know this. Meaning if there's four unranked players and six ranked players, it'll use a hybrid of both MMR to try to make the most balanced game possible. That is a huge round of applause. That's, 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 that's huge. That is actually huge. And this last one is actually more for me than you. Did you know that on average it takes 20 to 40 games to have your rank reach your MMR? That means if you play 20 to 40 rank matches during an episode, you should be equal or close to what your MMR actually is. And this is huge. People always ask me, what rank am I? And I, I, I tell them plat, low diamond, because that's what I place, but I've only ever played five to 10 matches maximum per ranked season. I don't care about ranked and it's why I say my rank doesn't mean anything, because it takes 20 to 40 games for that rank to ever mean anything. So now you know. Anyways, let me know if you learned anything new down below. Okay, bye.